Hello and welcome, it's Ruth here at artfulstamping.co.uk and I am still away on holiday but I couldn't resist wanting to film this for you today. So we're going to do a little bit of an emboss resist pattern, resist pattern sorry, put my teeth back in and I'm going to be stamping some images, sort of collage images onto a piece of cardstock here. I've got my Versamark embossing uh, ink. It's just a kind of clear ink. Sorry, I've put that sticker on. It doesn't come like that. That's just to tell me this is the one I want to use for white and clear powder. And I'm using this lovely stamp from Quiet Meadow. And it's kind of this grungy typewriter effect you're not really meant to be able to read all the words on here it's just a kind of texture effect and this really takes me back to gosh my early days of discovering stamping and seeing some particularly the european perhaps the german stampers this was pre-stamping up and I was always blown away by the way that they would combine textures and colours and so on. So I'm, I'm hoping to give you a little bit of a flavour of those early inspirations that I had doing this technique. So hello everybody who's watching. I know that I'm not doing this live but I, I will have set this as a premiere so as it premieres you can all chat to each other. So hello, hello. I'm not going to name any names this time just in case I miss somebody out don't want to be doing that um, and we're gonna just have that one that's that image now I'm going to use this one from tasteful touches and going to put some of these images on here now I can just about see where I have already stamped so I've got a rough idea of where not to go and I'm just kind of filling in the gaps of where I didn't go earlier and don't try not to neglect the edges one there one there maybe pop one at the top up here as well okay so I'm going to be using deliberately using clear embossing powder and this is because I actually want the yellow so this is so saffron cardstock I want the yellow to show through after I emboss it so I'm just going to make sure this piece of paper is removable actually I think what I'll do is I'll grab a bit of a scrappy one that I've got here I always end up with lots of scrap so we'll use that and because I've inked all across this page I'm just going to lay that embossing powder down like so and just run it down the page oh my goodness that's so satisfying that's like watching rain oh my goodness I should make those ASMR videos <laughs> that was like super relaxing to watch okay oh now this is the tricky bit turning it over making sure you're not sticking your fingers in it I suppose because this is going to be quite grungy looking it won't matter if I do wipe away some of these by accident but I'm going to try as much as possible to keep it all together right and then the important bit don't forget to pour your precious embossing powder back into the tub because you may forget that you've had it there on a piece of paper. You might knock that paper and it will go flying across your room. Just saying. And the only reason I'm saying is because it has happened to me in the past. And I know. I've been there. Just use this as an opportunity to wipe down my desk. Excuse me. <laughs> right. Let's get this piece of paper back on. And I'm going to heat emboss this. Now for those of you who have never seen this before, it's like magic. Basically, we're melting these tiny, tiny particles onto the paper. The ink kind of holds the particles in place while we heat it. And then can you see that wonderful, magical change 
as it melts and sticks to the paper. So I have heard so many stories of people falling in love with stamping because of this technique. And uh, it can be used to great effect, particularly this uh, what's it called? Relief embossing. So relief embossing is basically where you stamp a clear image and you emboss it and then you colour over the top. So this is not going to stay like this. We're going to actually be putting loads more stamps and stuff over the top. Right, I know what. I'm going to go away and heat this up and come back to you. So as I was heating that, I realised, wouldn't it be fabulous if we did a little bit of dotage at this point here. Now, you are very used to me adding lots of dots at the end of a stamping process. And I've probably mentioned the idea of potentially doing it at the beginning, but I don't think I've actually done it. So this is a really good opportunity to add those dots in there now, because, of course, these are going to show up as yellow once we've got lots of ink onto the page so i'm just going to add a few of these and some more clear embossing powder and heat it again and just enjoy all those lovely dots appear later on Got to find the lid do remember your lid it's kind of important to make sure that your ink doesn't dry up and then I'm going to throw some more clear powder over this, heat it and come back. So now that I've done that, I want to start adding some colour to this paper. So I've got two greens and two purples here. Now, just to be aware that when you add green and purple together, you can end up with a little bit of a brownie kind of colour. But I'm not too worried about that because I have already cut out some brown pieces here. This is from the... Uh, die set that goes with Quiet Meadow and so I actually want this to take on a little bit of a a brownie sort of slightly more masculine tinge um, but we're going to just see what happens and then then do that okay so I've got my blending brushes here so I'm just gonna add some colour in various places we are going to also add some stamping onto here. I'll use that piece there to protect the paper from my the oils on my fingers. And I know normally we say oh stamp off the brush before applying, but I'll, this is going to be absolutely saturated later with colour, so I'm not too worried about marks appearing just yet because there's lots more colour going to be going on to here and I'm just kind of going anywhere and everywhere really at this point okay so that's a bit of green down I want to do a little bit of purple and this is just to get an initial layer of colour on and then we'll do some stamping so I hope everyone's having a good week. Uh, myself and the family are away at a Christian camp that we go on. Obviously last year we missed out because of you know what. But we're hoping this year it's going to go by without a hitch. There's less of us meeting this year, but it should be a good time. And I may have, may have or I may come on at some point during the holiday because I'm no doubt going to take some stamps with me because there are a few people there who do like to have a little bit of a craft session. My sister's also going to be there and my, well, the one that's in this country at the moment, Helen's in Zambia, so she won't be coming. But um, my parents will be there and my parents like the odd little craft stamping session, so... The weather does not look good. So this is the week before that I'm filming this and the weather does not <laughs> look good for that week. So we might have to kind of do some indoor activities. Okay, so I'm just going to turn this around because I am designing this paper to be cut up 
in this direction. So I'm going to now bring over my Quiet Meadow stamp set because I do want to stamp some of these lovely flowers on here and this lovely flower. It's really detailed line drawing. Very kind of almost that old-fashioned botanical style, you know, that really strict way of drawing botanicals. So Right, so this is Rich Razzleberry that I'm using now. And I'm just going to, oh, I'll just find a space and stamp, Ruth. Let's just get that, get it on. Because we've got such a dark colour here being used, we can do second generation stamping. Let's pop one in there. Another one there. And I'm really liking the colours actually. Very nice. Right, let's get some flowers on. Oh, this line art is just so pretty. And you know what? This is what why I often say to people who are sort of creativity phobic as it were they've for some reason they've had a bad experience and been told that they're not good at art or for some reason they they've grown up believing that they can't be creative and I say this is why stamping is such a great starting point because the artwork is already done for you all you've got to do is pick some colors and go for it have a have a go and see see what happens you know just want the odd extra one in here and there. There we go. Done that. Okay, so that's what it looks like now. I've got those in there. Now there are some tiny little flowers in this set. And as usual, sometimes I haven't got the patience to be quite honest with you. I say I don't have the time. It's more like I don't have the patience to be faffing around and stamping one at a time. So I find it much easier to get in there and stamp the two together. And see, look, half halves my stamping time. And there's no reason why you can't mix and match your stamps. Obviously, if they're, one is photopolymer and one is red rubber, you, don't, you can't do that because they're a different height. But if you want to mix your red rubber stamps with other red rubber stamps, why not? Stick them all on the same block and go for it. I may do that, actually, because um, I want lots more images in here. I know. I, can you believe it? <laughs> You're probably thinking, Ruth, you've already got tons of stuff on there. No, this is not enough, people. Believe you me, we want more, 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 more. So I hope you're all welcoming people onto this live, my regulars. Welcome if it's the first time that you've watched one of my videos. And if you're watching this on the premiere, I'm hoping that uh, you got a warm welcome. And if you're not watching this on the premiere, or you're watching this in a year's time so this is currently well i'm filming this in july but this will probably go out in august um then welcome right now what i like to do is every so often i give the whole sheet a bit of a brush over because anywhere that i've stamped onto the embossed areas they've got ink on so i'm just trying to clean them clean it up so that we can see what's happening a bit more right now i want to go and get some more textures so here i have this lovely sort of field of poppies type stamp from the stamp set painted poppies and i'm thinking it'd be nice to put some of these throughout the sheet here so, I'm just 
I find a bit of a space. So I'm using Old Olive, so this is a slightly darker green here. I'm just stamping these on, first generation, in areas that I think they'll fit. I'm not going for any, There's no. I'm not going for a pattern, there's no kind of logical pattern going on here, it's just I'm looking for the space where I think it will show. And then the other thing that I wanted to stamp in here was some more texture. So I quite like this more open weave one and then also this brick looking one. So we'll come to that one in a sec. So I'm using our Stampin' Up! acrylic blocks. Now this is something that, you know, I use on a daily basis almost a daily basis these blocks and I guess it's one of the, those things that I hardly ever mention but the acrylic blocks I come highly recommended because they are thick and I don't know if you've ever noticed for those of you who've never used these before they actually have this is it called a bezel bevel it's got a handhold and it makes it a bit easier to hold onto the the blocks some of you may have got the thinner ones that have come in the kits or ones from other companies and you are yet to experience the luxury of the stamping up ones so these tools are something that i would recommend that if you can afford from time to time to pop one in your basket I really do recommend them because they are so different to any other blocks on the market. I know you can get fancy blocks with you know, lines on and so on, but um, I find that these ones are really easy to use. So let's see what else we've got going on here. So it's really starting to fill up and I want to get some more colour in here. I'm wondering whether to stamp that brick looking one in a bit more of a brownie colour. Nothing too dark, just something a little bit different. So I'm going to grab some crumb cake and have that in the background as well. Oh, need to ink that up a bit more. I think this. There's some green king. I might do. I think it might also be the, the style of stamp that it is. It's very, very. Oh, it's very faint. Hmm. Let's try soft suede instead. Yeah, go with soft suede. Let's see if this shows up now. Oh, that's a bit better. And yes, I am stamping on stamping, pattern on pattern. But that's okay because it's that lovely yellow image that we're going to be focusing on showing through in a minute. I remember talking to a few of my stamping friends and I think it was after I stamped that shell piece with embossed resist and and a few there were a few comments saying people would have stopped the process much earlier on and not kept going like i did and that is part part of the trick with some of these really detailed sheets if you want to get that depth it is literally just to keep going okay so i've got some soft suede now on my brush and i'm wanting to try and highlight some of these words more there we go can you see that starting to appear a bit better so i'm just going to focus in a bit more there we go they're starting to show up a little bit and then of course we're going to go over with a a, 
a brush or a cloth over the top just to wipe away some of this ink but to be honest if you just keep going and going and going eventually it gets to the point where the brush runs out of ink and it picks up the ink that's on the embossed parts and and just works it into the paper so there is that natural process of cleaning that happens if you just keep rubbing and rubbing and rubbing So I hope you haven't all gone to sleep just yet on this video. I'm going to have such fun reading back the comments and the uh, the chat. It is so weird to be crafting without looking up and seeing your comments. I'm probably getting more done though, aren't I? Not having to keep checking in on you all, making sure you're behaving yourselves. No one's made me a cup of tea yet, though. <laughs> right, so I feel like we need a little bit more purple in here. I'm actually enjoying some of the lighter spaces, so I'm, I may just be a little bit tempered in how I go into this and not, not add too much purple. But I do want some of this dotage to show up a bit more. Oh my goodness, look what happened there. It suddenly went very pink, didn't it, all that? This is what I mean, you have to kind of keep going and going and going. Until eventually that pink gets rubbed off. I think it's because this rich razzleberry has a tendency to dye anything and everything in its sight. It loves, it loves to turn anything pink. But like I said, if you keep going, I'll just grab a piece of tissue. Just give that a rub. There we go. You'll see how that's really starting to look quite gorgeous. So here I've got, it wasn't showing up so well, but I've decided to try and stick with perhaps going on the inside of the flowers. Ooh, getting a good arm workout here. Now, I know this does take a bit of time. What are we into now? Maybe get heading towards 30 minutes. Of course, I I didn't film the bit where I was heating, heat embossing fully. But even if it does take you 30, 40 minutes to create a piece like this, you can cut it up and just use bits and pieces of it. You don't have to use it all in one go. Okay, I think I might stop. Oh, no. I was going to say I'm going to stop there for the purple, but I've just realised there's a bit down here that I haven't done. Okay. Right, let's get some more green in here. And I'm just aiming to try and show off a little bit more of these embossed areas. Like so. Because we want this dotage to show up, don't we? After we went to all that bother to stamp it, to pour the powder on it, to heat it. 
like it to show up a little bit more. Right, I think we're nearly there. Just going to clean up a little bit. And then I'm thinking it would be helpful actually to bring in a little bit of dotage over the top. So this is now the rich razzleberry. looking for gaps not that there are many anymore Now I can hear you shouting at me, move the page. <laughs> uh, I want to see. It's funny, isn't it? You know, I, I could do most of this the wrong way round, but then it gets to a point where you think, no, I need this to be the right way round. I've just got to get a feel of it. Oh, I love this. I really do love this. Okay, so one more time with the brush, and this is just trying to wipe in some of that colour that's got onto any of the embossed areas. And then a little bit of a swish with the tissue just to buff it all up. get that yellow to really shine through and it is nice doing this on a oops a colored piece of cardstock rather than white sometimes you don't want that starkness all the time and this pale yellow is just perfect I think that's going to be my distressed corner I think because I swiped at that a few times oh love it right so now I have these lovely cut pieces and I'm going to make maybe a couple of cards using these. I don't really want to cover up too much of the design. So I'm wondering if it work, would work if I cut seven centimeters of that and then just use small panels of it. I'll keep that for another day. So I'm going to cut these to just under 10 centimetres. So I'm just going to cut them at 9.9 .9 so that I can get three of these. Yep, that worked. And oh, now. What colour? What colour could I use to... Hmm, having a bit of a think. Might have to audition some colours here. This is that lovely pale papaya. That goes nicely, even though I've not used pale papaya, it kind of goes quite well. So 
I'm going to just cut some card bases. I'm actually cutting through two sheets of cardstock here. Just save me some time. using my bone folder to make sure those creases are really tight. Okay. Now I feel like I need a border of some sort around there. I wonder if a border of the metallic would look nice. I have some of this rose gold paper here. And I think just a lovely thin border of that would look beautiful. So I'm going to cut this at seven and a half. I might as well cut another one while I'm here. And so that was met, that was at 9.9. .9. So if I cut this at 10.4, that will give me the five millimeter border that I need. Ah, oh, look at that. Oh, that's so pretty. Wrong way around, but yes. Okay, I like that. Now, I don't want to waste the inside of that piece of cardstock, so I'm actually going to punch out a shape from that. Where's my... Oh, there it is. It's got that label punch. Because I can use that for something else later on. While I'm here, I'll cut this one out as well. So this is such a simple way of creating more of a focal point when you've created such a detailed background and you want to really make it sing on your card. Now, I know that this is not exactly in the middle. So if you ever have this problem where you've got a bit of a gap, top and bottom, it is always better to push it slightly to the top and have a slightly smaller gap at the top than at the bottom. For some reason, it's just visually more pleasing. It's just the way it is. Just gonna get that bit of glue off there. Right. I'm going to stick that on there like so, making sure that's straight. And it's the right way around. The great thing about the Tombow is you've got that five kind of five seconds wiggle room if you haven't got it completely straight. Okay. So one on as well. Now if I was being super frugal I could have cut something else out of that portion couldn't I? Maybe some leaves or something. But sometimes we just gotta get on. Get on with getting on. Is anyone else like that? Sometimes I can be such a procrastinator. I know I've got to get on and do something and then Almost the fear of getting started stops me. And then I have to speak to myself. I have to have a good talking to myself and go, Ruth, get on with getting on. And then I get on with getting on. And it's okay. Now I've cut these out in... I've got loads of these in early espresso because I thought that was the colour I wanted. And now I've done it, I'm looking at these thinking... 
I'm not sure. I think they're almost a little bit too dark. I wonder if I can lighten them a little bit with a bit of craft white ink. Just gonna... Now this is going to be messy. <laughs> if you didn't think I was messy already, this is going to take, take it to a whole new level. Right, I'm just trying to get on some of that just on the edges not get too messy and I'm going to get my little bit of tissue here just rub that in a bit right let's see if that shows up a bit better oh yes that's much better it's not quite perfect not quite the contrast but there we go Let's have a look at these other images I have. Maybe pop one or two. Hmm, not sure. Maybe that way. Okay, let's get some white onto here. So this is just the Craft White Ink Pad. Now, if you ever order one, some of you may have already done, your ink pad will look more like the modern one now i've heard a few people say to me it took half a bottle for to ink it because what happens is stamping up so, send them to you uninked and then you need to ink it yourself so when you do that you do have to just almost like really fill it up put, put half a bottle of ink on there now the other thing that people have said to me is that when they've used it for stamping they've said it doesn't show up so I will give you a little tip about how to actually get the ink onto your stamp. I think a lot of people end up just putting the stamp on and pushing in. Then they stamp on wherever they're meant to stamp and they think that that's it. But I would say what you need to do is actually tap, 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 tap quite a few times to make sure that ink is really stuck on before you stamp with it because it takes a few coats as it were to get it on there so if you do have this ink pad and you're a little bit disappointed with it have another go because it's probably because you haven't persevered and uh, you know got, got got a really good coating if you have got something like a stamparatus or some sort of stamp platform type tool i would also recommend using that because um it means that you can get like a double coating on there right so that's my little image it's got on there oh come on stick please i'm going to give it a little bit of extra love here to make sure that's really stuck down because it's such a fine image i'm still not convinced you know i might um cut can you imagine if this was cut in this paper? <gasps> Look, if that was cut in that and put on there, I think I might do that in a second. I'm just going to stick this one on and then I'm going to go and get my cut and emboss machine and cut another image just to see what it looks like. Right now, I would say because of the detail in this card already, you will probably struggle a little bit to find where to put a sentiment. If you really, really, really do want one on the front, that's fine. Perhaps you could stamp white onto brown and do it that way, uh, or dark, a dark colour. But I would suggest you just ref leave your the inside to have your sentiment and make your feelings known on the inside okay i'm going to go and cut a piece with this just to see how it compares and come back to you right oh look at that it's so pretty that is stunning oops i've just stuck my fingers in the white there i wonder what would happen if i offset that with that 
no it doesn't really make much difference whatsoever okay that's fine you know i just had to check now i do have this little piece here left over and rather than trying to cut myself another piece to be my matting layer under here i'm actually going to cheat i'm going to cut this in half length uh, point to point and i'm going to do a kind of bit of a faux corner here i'm just going to stick that there like that and that there and then have that going like so there we go so if you do find that you haven't got perhaps enough or big enough piece to do you know because clearly <laughs> that is smaller than that um yeah cut, cut it in into sections and use it that way just remember what corner you want to stick down so that one is going on there like so And it's wet glue so you have to kind of hold it in place until it stops wiggling you see the benefit of it is that you can wiggle but then when you want it to stop wiggling you have to hold on to it i'm not too worried about getting loads of glue on at this point because i'm going to be sticking this whole piece down so. So this metallic cardstock is in the annual catalogue and it comes in this lovely rose gold kind of colour and also like a bronzy colour. I'm just going to get this stuck down before it moves. And because it's going round pretty much a lot of that corner and down the side you probably won't even notice, or whoever gives gets this card will not notice that it's not going all the way around. Oh, that's so pretty. Actually, that's so pretty that I'm actually going to use dimensionals to try and attach this. And... Oops, a bit too far over. There we go. Um, have it stand out a little bit. From the crowd, as it were. Let's see if I can get a little one on there. Just, oh, just about. I have got a thing about dimensionals not showing up underneath. That one's off, that one's off. That one's off, right. So pretty right there we have it guys so I will go through all the colors that we used so first of all we use so saffron cardstock we use the Versamark clear embossing watermark stamp pad this is a current product we've stocked it for many years I think we've stocked it ever since I've been a demonstrator actually and it's just a cracking great ink pad to have then use some clear embossing powder and stamped various images. So I stamped that image and the dotage and the script one. Oh, where's it gone? This one here. So we stamped those three to start off with and emboss those with clear embossing powder then kept working and working to get the brushed ink in there and then stamped more again with this stamp this stamp this stamp that stamp and some of this one from painted poppies this pretty floral also oh no we used that already uh, but i'll bring it back here to remind you where's the texture stamps here they are natural textures i use that one and that one and then did more inking more stamping <laughs> did then stamp some purple dottage because just just had to just had to do that 
And so then we ended up with this beautiful sheet here that can be used, you know, many times. I've, I've only used a section, a third of it, and we've got three cards. And so, you know, we could use maybe even that. Just a piece going across a card would look lovely. Of course, you can use a whole piece if you wanted to. But um, it's the sort of thing that you can just have in your stash and then... You know, when you know, oh, I know Aunt Mabel will love these colours or whatever, you can then just pick a piece and cut it up and use it. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. If this is your first time to my channel, please do subscribe. Usually I'm on live at this time of day, but uh, I'm on holiday, so I film this ahead of time. But please do come back again and visit and do hit subscribe as well if you would like to see more of my work. And there are plenty, plenty of more tutorials uh, on my channel and you'd be most welcome to watch them. If, of course, you want any of the products that you've seen me use today, they are all currently available. So this is uh, summer 2021. Uh, they are currently available in the annual catalogue and uh, you can order online and click that button in my description. So I will put all the details of the stamps inks that I've used and I look forward to seeing what you make, guys. Please go over to Artful Stamping Space if you want to share any of your projects. I'd love to see them. So goodbye, everybody. I'll give you time to say goodbye to each other because I know you like all, you all like saying goodbye to each other and saying goodnight and saying good day or whatever. And uh, I'll catch you guys again soon. Lots of love for now. And please give me a thumbs up. See you later.